Hey everybody out there in YouTube, Instagram land, I'm back with another chat. This time I get to sit down with Ian Powell. He's a fantastic artist, founder, and head sculptor for Kilter Grips. His shapes are amazing. He's a funny dude to listen to. Guy's seen some things, um, and he's just got a lot of wisdom, man. He always has, and I always love talking to this guy. As I come into the lab, I see Ian silhouetted in this big window. He's starting to cut these shapes out, and he's got the music going, and you can just see he's in that headspace doing the whole mad scientist thing. You'll see it was a great intro to this conversation. So we sit down in Ian's climbing wall testing laboratory uh, next to his little shaping workshop. Had a chance to talk through some of the shapes, some of what's happening in climbing, some of what's happening in the shaping industry, a little bit about flow, art, creativity. Uh, and then, you know, got to share some fun stories uh, about the one and only Ian Powell. So I hope you guys really enjoy this. Um, yeah, have a listen. Um, I'm, I may actually open with a story. Yeah, great. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so this just came at me yesterday. D do you know a kid named Matt Lloyd? Yeah. I know the name. Yeah. I know I know him, and I'm just trying to think of the face and how I know him. He's, he's got a gym down in Denver called Mountain Strong. Oh, yeah, yeah, great. Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yep. So we were talking, and I uh, was told him I was going to come up and chat with you. Yeah. And he asked me if I would please relay this story to you, just to see if you even remember this okay. happening. Oh, boy. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So he, I don't know if he told me and I forgot or if he actually remembers where it is, but he said he was at the climbing gym one time. Yeah. And he walked up to a chalk bag. I think he was at the spot. Oh. <laughs> and he walked <laughs> up ahead, to a chalk ahead. bed and he and he picked up the chalk bag and it said as far as I remember, yeah. Ian motherfucking Powell's chalk bag. I, I think it just said I don't even know if it was possessive. I think it <laughs> might have just said Ian motherfucking Powell. Okay. <laughs> Clark Shelk, pusher, Clark Shelk, yeah, yeah. cordless, made that for me. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, go ahead. Do you remember? Do you remember uh, that? I, I remember the chalk okay, bag. Okay. I'd forgotten about it until you just mentioned it. Somebody nicked it. No. Somebody had the balls to take that chalk bag. <laughs> that's going to be in the fucking climbing hall of fame someday, I'm sure. I, I'm like, that's impressive because you know if I catch you with that bag. <laughs> I, I'm going to know. I, kinda, yeah, yeah. We're well, going to have words. He said, he said he picked up the chalk bag, <laughs> right? And he yeah. read it and he put it down. And just as he put it down, now he was like 13. Oh, I think sure. at the time. He was a little yeah, kid, that right? makes sense. Yeah, yeah. He put it down and you came over and you said to him, you looked him right in the eye and you said, do you want to know the future? <laughs> oh my god it sounds do you like remember the, what, what okay so he says he says <laughs> and, and he's like in his mind this is kind of like yeah yeah i yeah. guess so oh, what? Say, yeah, what and he says this and you went up and you held two holds and you just went Bop, and crossed over the train uh switched hands yeah 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 and he said something like dynamic position changes that's the whole that's the that's, that's the it that's the future that's the future <laughs> do you, you don't remember this i that is perfectly me <laughs> of course i did that yeah 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 that's how i talked for years yeah and is it happening now i mean it's no like not still it still is the future <laughs> i'm not wrong i'm just not right yet we're just waiting uh, but yeah yeah we're just waiting for proof um that's definitely the future yeah i look i i thought dynamic climbing would have been here 20 years ago man like 30 years ago we were we got started doing it yeah me and typhus um yabo john john yablonski super famous yabo from if anybody's an american climber uh from the valley yabo was super into dinos and he taught me and ty we we're like 19 at a gym called city rock in the bay area and uh, the first time i saw a dino it was a california dude i think it was hans or it was yabo i think it was probably hans florin in Waco tanks, and he did this jump on the front side in Waco tanks. Yeah. And we didn't, I mean, this was the late 80s, and I, well, I had no idea you could jump. Like, we were, I didn't know you could climb overhangs. We were climbing slabs on granite in the middle of Texas. Yeah. Um, we used to walk by the overhanging caves because I just didn't know you could climb overhangs. This yeah. didn't occur to us. And then we saw this guy jump out this overhanging line, you know, and do this. And we, we didn't know what it's called. We just went back. I was in high school. We, like, hitchhiked out there for a comp or something. And we just went back, and, and me and a couple of climber friends called the flying squirrel move. Because I think it was Hans, because he had really long, flowing blonde hair. Sure, really, sure. really lit up the sky, you know, as he did this, th Super. this jump. Yeah. I just imagine something out of, like, a, oh. uh, some kind of film slow-mo. You saw Absolutely it in your head. Absolutely tight, like <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, just this flying. He flew, like, 30 feet up the rock, you know. <laughs> And we call it the flying squirrel move. And, then, and so anyway, so I was kind of obsessed with it. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, well, 
whatever that is, that's what I want to do. And yeah. then I got into like Johnny Dawes, w- the, the dynamic movement that Johnny Dawes was and still is doing is still, I mean, the, ba- the world is just catching up mm-hmm. to Johnny Dawes, barely. Mm-hmm. Like th- they've caught up to 30% of what he understands, you know? Yeah. Um, just in the last five years, 10 years, maybe five years. So in, in plastic gyms, people are jumping, running across the wall, catching stuff and catching holds in, in interesting ways. It's a little bit more complex. They're still a little bit stuck jumping to pretty good holds. Mm. Right, what they'll jump to kind of two bad holds in a row and paddle and paddle, mm-hmm. and they, and, but they'll end on a really good hold. Right. Yeah, that ain't, that's not where this ends, man. This ends with the last hold is so bad that you need that, you need another bad one for your other hand that's separate, and then you need one or two more feet to all land in perfect position. I mean, you want to do that, now we're maybe we're as complex as a kickflip. Yeah. You know? Th- yeah. That's really, yeah, 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 that's yeah. really what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Um, and I've, I haven't been doing it for the last 10 years or something. I've kind of gotten away from it. I want to get back in and need to. But, um, yeah, just running across the rock was fascinating to me. And then, and then, and then one of the things is, yeah, we're route setters in competitions are setting sequences. So they're trying to force you, especially if they use pockets, they're trying to force you to go left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. Well, you can break their sequence if you just mm. can dynamically, and you don't even need a foot, mm. just do a quick pull up and switch your hands. And it's, it's totally doable. Uh, again, 30 years ago, he used to smoke a lot of weed in practice and it worked, you know, <laughs> you just do that for an hour, <laughs> you know, with like some fucking music on and, uh, and you get you get pretty good at it, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's how you learn to kickflip too, I guess. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, that's funny. That's classic story. <laughs> it's sad that I it, it still hasn't happened because that's a ten that's a fifteen year old story. It's a fifteen year old story for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny because he that's was great. Yeah, he was. Uh, he's like, please, just please tell him and see if he even remembers that happening because it was for him <laughs> such a. It was such a moment, you know. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What is this dude on about? Yeah. That's great, man. Mm. Uh, we, I, I, we need to get him some holds in that gym of his. I need. We need to get him a kilter oh, board should. in that gym. Yeah. He, he would. From what I understand, he's that Mountain Strong gym is one of the first places I've ever heard of. This in the last couple of years, where they're he's he's getting people to do you know deadlifts and climb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, just pushing that. Um, what do they call it? The WODs, the workout of the days from yeah. from CrossFit and yep. throwing climbing in it. I'm uh, that's the, that's what I'd run up to another kid and say that's the future now. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like living another. He's really pushing, as far as I understand. Yeah. Another, I think a big part of the future of the sport. He's mm-hmm. he's a, he's right on the edge. And that's I think he's. I don't want to talk for him. Yeah. Obviously, you should listen to the episode because we did an episode. Oh yeah, that. great. I will. Um, but uh, you know, he's really pushing. He's pushing. For him, he as a kid when i knew him he always had this like thing his little mantra was just try hard yeah that sure. was his mantra sure. you know what i mean and he was sure. always just like bah, bah, bah. i mean it worked for chris sharma that's really Seems, yeah that's what chris did it's, yeah his footwork was terrible for years he just wouldn't let go if he could help yeah it. yeah it worked out yeah a bit of your backstory sure people know your name but Some. give us a little bit of your, <laughs> yeah, give a us couple. give us a i mean i i, I was doing a podcast um, like a month ago and I, I refer to myself as an extremely minor character in the climbing world mm-hmm. i think that's probably not uh, inaccurate. i don't know if that's true yeah, yeah, but, yeah but, well, i don't know if that's wholly true yeah, but, uh, but my, a minor character yeah. um uh yeah it, just from design you know i mean uh, like i started climbing when i was about 14 like 1984 14 uh something like that um and I uh, just fell in love with it. I couldn't believe that people actually climbed on purpose. Like, I, I mean, of course, I was super into climbing. And I just, as soon as I realized people, like, went rappelling and then and then actually went up the rocks, too. I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. So, uh, you know, anyway, so just kind of obsessed with it. And growing up in Waco, Texas, where there wasn't much climbing. So we just did what we could down in Texas and Chanted Rock by Austin. And I didn't know you grew up down there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. For that part of my life, yeah. yeah. Atlanta before that. But, yeah, from about 11 on in Waco. And so climbing around Austin. Uh, getting learned to climb with some of the old Austin, um, you know, just the, the the guys who the guy who started a school. People just go out to Enchanted Rock. Just just great learning to climb on less than vertical slabs. Learning what f- you know friction does. Climbing shoes, um, how to relax, how to trust your feet. That just yeah. trust your feet and stand up. You know, yeah. so the real old school uh, education. And then, um, uh, uh, you know, growing up in like 
living in the Bible Belt High School in Texas as a as an avowed atheist or whatever. I just couldn't. I wasn't about to stay in Waco, Texas. So, uh, Ty Foos, who's also another, I referred to him as a, the other minor character. <laughs> uh, he and I, uh, we went to high school together, so we were obsessed with climbing. We both got into it. So we left when we were like, you know, the, the graduation year or something, and ended up um, driving around the country in a BW bus, whatever, going to Smith Rocks. And then uh, I broke my ankle on a on a climb up there because we didn't really know how to belay very well. <laughs> that was a place sport climbs. So we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, so we went to, down to City Rock, which at the time was the biggest climbing gym in the country, kind of this cutting-edge climbing gym. This is 1990, I believe, 90 or 91, set right in there. And, uh, um, and Ty just insisted on getting a job. He just wouldn't let him say no. So he just was sweeping the floor. Um, and became a head route setter. And I route set there, but I never was on payroll. I was I was really into, there was a art school up the road. They had a girl's dorm that I discovered. Uh, so I, I spent <laughs> the season there. At um, art school. Yeah, at <laughs> art school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, and, and then uh, I, I went to, I, so, so climbing around City Rock in a cast, in my broken leg cast, I kind of got strong sort of fast. Um and it, all we did was kind of train and stuff. And so I got strong enough to, to sort of get invited by Hans Florin and, um, you know, Steve Schneider and a couple of those Bay Area guys over to a World Cup season in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, uh, you know, my, and, and Ty's folks wouldn't give him any money, so Ty couldn't. Ty had to stay with a job. And my, my mom was like, yeah, I'll give you a thousand bucks a month to go do these World Cups. So she was very sweet of her. So I got to Thanks, go do mom. World Cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ty, I'm sure Ty's still bad about that. <laughs> He's a better climber than me. I was just stronger. So, uh, so we went to um, I, I, did, you know, did some World Cups and wanted to compete. And I was a terrible competitor, and and uh, I just always overtrained. I got hurt just constantly, and you know, big wide self destructive streak. It was just a mess, you know. And so, um, I came back. Uh, I, I did a World Cup season, which was great. They would let anybody do World Cups, and so I did a couple um, over there and, and climbed around Europe. And then, and then came to Boulder, and then uh, got a job in a climbing gym in Boulder in 91, and then eventually got a job also at a climbing hold company called Straight Up. And and I, I grew up as an art art kid. I grew up mm -hmm. as an artist. So as soon as I could kind of marry the art, uh, the sculpture and climbing, then that that became a, the biggest part of my life for the, since about 1992 mm -hmm. or three or something, whenever I started at Straight Up. So I worked Straight Up for a couple of years, and they went out of business. I started my own little hold company and then invited Ty. Ty came out, and so Ty and I back together again started shaping a lot of holds for a company called eGrips, which is still around. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I took about a t I took, oh, 10, 10 years off. Um, I got into fine art. I went back to my fine art and then mm -hmm. had a bunch of success at, at some galleries, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, not enough. I should have stayed with it and, and gone all the way to New York, but I didn't. I sort of crashed my life and... And uh, uh, just crashed my life for about mm -hmm. 10 good dramatic years. <laughs> and uh, and then came back to climbing again and started Kilter. So I started Kilter uh, with Jackie Huffley, my partner, in, oh, I don't know, what did we start it in uh, um, 2013 or 14 or something? Um, yeah, we're about, something like that, right in there. And uh, and yeah, and, and it's been Kilter ever since. And then and I think because it was my third time at a company and second time owning a climbing hold company, it went really fast. Mm. Um, and and again, I had a little bit of a name from designing eGrips, so um, we we went back to the factory that that made our holds for eGrips, which uses a very good material. Mm -hmm. um, so we just kind of stayed with the best materials, and I had enough of a name, and so Kilter has taken off, and now. I think we're the largest climbing hold company in the world. We definitely have the largest sales. We have the largest line of shapes, and mm -hmm. I think we're the largest sales in America and maybe the world. We're up there. So, um, do you do all the shaping? Not all of it. We have. I, it, it's frustrating because we never have m molding is never fast enough. There's pallet racks over there that are filled with. I don't know, 3,000 shapes that I've finished that we can't get molded because molding, wow. you know, we have a second factory that we work with in Europe, which is, we work with the two biggest hold factories in the world that actually pour the plastic and both of them are so backed up with designs and so slow. A European one's taking 18 months now to turn a shape around. Wow. So it's, 
as much as I like to share shaping with other people, it is hard. Yeah. So we try to stay really kind of targeted. Like Jeremy Ho is a is a is one of the sort of most prolific setters in America. Jeremy was at Touchstone in California. He was the head of all setting in Touchstone for years in California. So all up and down California, it's eleven or twelve or thirteen gyms. They keep growing. So Jeremy kind of I kind of reached out to him and said, "Hey man, do you want to shape holds?" We, we, we used to be real. We used to invite a lot of people, and some people took us up on it. And so Jeremy's become a really great friend and does great work. Jimmy Webb, um, he was in town, and I said, hey, do you want to try shaping holds? And so some people try it. You know, Daniel Woods came by and tried it, but it just didn't suit him. I mean, yeah. you gotta, you got to love it. Yeah. Because um, it's just dirty, dusty. It sucks, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you got to love what you're doing and you got to click with it. Yeah. And so the people who click with it, like Jimmy Webb, Jimmy Webb's a great shaper. Yeah. Um, all these guys, you know, it takes a little while to kind of get the, you know, there, there's a few things about the design. It is design more than art. We mm -hmm. try to be artistic with it, but it's design. It's got to be comfortable. It's got to not break. It's got to not to be too thin, too thick. It's got to not spin. It's got to, you know, get loose on the wall, all this kind of stuff. So I, I help these guys understand those principles. And then um, some of them are just great. Yeah. We had a, a, a setter from Earth Treks named uh, Keith Dickey, who Keith got cancer and died just about two years ago, which is just heartbreaking. But Keith was great, and he did. He has a line of holds with us, mm -hmm. and um, we pay a royalty to everybody. So Keith's family gets that royalty. His kids get that royalty cool. forever. We still have stuff to release of his. So that's really that's, yeah. That's a great. Oh, that's cool. That's this kind of great thing that um, Keith had a whole bunch of people in his life. He was really involved in the in the church in the American Christian Church. I don't know what branch, but mm -hmm. um, so there's all these people who didn't really understand that much about climbing, and we kind of go to them and say, "Hey, you know this your your family members, your your friend's work lives on around the world. For you know, eventually millions of people will cl will climb on on these holes. These and holes, so yeah. yeah, those are very. It was something. It was yeah. something positive to be able to share with these people in, in the middle of a tragedy, which I love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so we work with a few people and everybody, anybody who gets work, Alex Puccio did some work. Mm. And so everybody gets a royalty forever, cool. which I believe uh, very strongly is the right thing to do. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So mm. most of the work I do, but we definitely try to try to work with some other people. Share that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think a couple of things on my, like the process of shaping to me seems you get into it and it's a, it's the exchange between the thing that you're working on and your first ideas and then it just kind of changes and grows and sure well well i mean we were before we turned the mics and we were casually talking about the word flow you know you know yeah. I, I mean i flow is one of the biggest words in my entire life ever since was it mihaly sisnesk mihaly okay yeah, you say what, his name yeah right <laughs> so uh mihaly sisney <laughs> uh wrote that book flow the psychology of optimal experience you and mm -hmm. i i think probably talked about this when mm -hmm. we met yeah, twenty years 20 ago, years whatever ago. it is now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because I just, I just always love that principle. I just think it's, it's the, w it's explaining a Zen state to Westerners. Mm -hmm. I think, and mm -hmm. and we tend to get it through action. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, everybody around the world, obviously, every culture does that. But uh, you know, we understand it through basketball. Like you know, oh, I was in the zone. You know, so yeah. any, anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. so of course, shaping. I mean, all. I I don't know if you're not in a flow state while you're working on your artwork. I. I think you. I mean, there's something wrong. I think. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe there is a. Is there a flow to not having flow? Is, is somebody's <laughs> is somebody's expression I, actually yeah, the, flowless? The flow of I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah. that social media feels very flow interrupted. Oh man, no kidding. Right, as a tool to interrupt flow. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. The the sort of Buddhist principle: as soon as you ask yourself, "Well, how is this meditation going?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're done. Uh, yeah. How do I look meditating? Yeah. You're done. Yeah. So. Uh, maybe, maybe social media is the anti, anti, uh, Buddhism. I don't know. Um, so, uh, so flow state in creativity. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I go in with, I mean, you, 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 when you came in just a little while ago, I was, I was excited. I mean, it's so funny. 30 years later shaping mm -hmm. that big stupid blob of foam on the table, but yeah. I was getting kind of excited about sure, it. I'm sure. like, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be great. <laughs> I, and I was still making decisions as you came in the room. I was still making big decisions about what, where it's going to go. What am I going to exactly yeah. do with this shape? Yeah. Um, do you are, do you ever get worried that like, because I don't know, you probably made a few thousand 
holds by now? Oh, I mean, shaped. Oh, 15,000. But but produced in, in production? Sure. Uh, I don't know, six, seven, eight thousand or something. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. You know, yes. Oh, are you going to ask? Do I worry we're going to run out uh, of do, ideas? Does it ever feel like it you're just doesn't making the same and thing? And that's ever? funny. Um, I mean, sometimes I do. I definitely keep repeating some things that work. Um, I mean, there's only so many ways that a hold will fit in the hand comfortably. Mm-hmm. You know, with, with shaping climbing holds. Um, you you can't make it super rock like and uncomfortable. You know, cl- man, when we're climbing outside, we'll scrape our knuckles, we'll cut our hands, whatever. Right. Like right, you just right. deal with it. Yeah. You know, um, if if I if we do that inside, that's somebody's fault. Yeah. Right. If if sure. there's a yeah. sharp hold, that is a person's fault. That's right. not geology. Right. Right. And that fault would be mine <laughs> and my entire company. <laughs> so um, a lot of my job, I think, is to make the holds interesting. Mm-hmm. But without feeling too funky, right? right so right. Ah, let's make it feel a little interesting without crossing over. Th- and that's, that's, that's one of the design elements that keeps me in a flow. Like I have to stay in a flow state to get that right because mm-hmm. I am trying to make it as creative as possible. Let's make it as different as possible, but we can't go outside. There's a certain fe- – I, I, I call it a dreamy feel. Like, oh, that's got a dreamy little feel in the hand. Yeah. It's just right. Yeah. And so I'm trying to be creative and – but still make it just right yeah, sure. so i do i go back to um themes you know i mean there's pockets and you know in climbing we call them slopers and edges and crimps and so you kind of you kind of or pinches mm-hmm. um and then in some ways the different rock types and the different artwork that i put on there sometimes it feels like it's just hiding mm-hmm. it's, ju- it's just mm-hmm. excusing you know l- let's just make this look different but mm-hmm. As I said, there's parameters to how far I can go with the grip. Sure. But it that doesn't feel fake or goofy. It it, it feels okay. I mean, it feels like the right thing to do. Yeah. It feels appreciated and sure. it feels necessary. Yeah. Because otherwise, climbing indoors will get boring. Yeah. Well, I wonder, like you know, you you obviously have spent some hours outside climbing, and you've yeah. been in those places that are just kind of magical, where you're absolutely you're just like. I don't know how you do it. For me, the world just kind of goes away. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Just in that little space that's wild. Yeah. And I would imagine, you Nothing know, on like some it. level, you're trying to link that experience yes. into here. Yeah. In the shapes that you're creating, you're hoping to do some of that. I mean, look, man, the, you know, the, the, uh, who's a famous, famous worldwide sculptor, Richard Serra, who creates the, the, I think he uses the shipyard to bend big, giant pieces of core 10 steel and you and you tend to walk in between the big ribbons of core 10 steel mm-hmm. right so the core 10 is a steel that that rusts and it self protects so it, it's a very beautiful rich rusty color and then that kind of seals it and it stays that way so you know people all over the world love to walk through richard sarah's sculptures right mm-hmm. well you and i know that as slot canyons from utah yeah 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 I, you know, and he, I mean, that's what he's after. You walk in a slot canyon, it's a hundred feet up straight at that. Yeah. He would sell his soul to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, you just sure. can't. Sure. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, sculptors, yeah. you know, we walk around the American West or anywhere in the world. You walk through the forest of Fontainebleau, south of Paris. You walk through, um, you know, the, the what the, there's, what do they call it? The limestone forest. It, it, you know, there's a few of them. Uh, may, maybe oh, one of them written. isn't far from Hong Kong, actually. Yeah, one yeah of it's the, not far. Yeah, right. Over so in, these um, uh, I was going to say Young Shuo. That's where we have the big that limestone right. arches. Yeah, 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 sure. Insane. Yeah, yeah, so that sculpture, yes, I'm mm-hmm. absolutely trying to, trying to, I don't know, recreate or represent the sculptural element, that feeling. Because, yeah, there's just, there's, you know, you can't beat it. There's nothing like walking through nature. And it's been, for me, especially rock, right? So mm-hmm. especially... I think there was something pretty universally appreciated about those slot canyons and about rock formations, yeah. but maybe we feel it a little harder than some people. I mean, really, really just in love with an interesting rock feature. So, yeah. yes, that is a huge part. Without that connection, without those um, years and, and, and days out in those environments, I don't. I can't imagine I would be a very good hold shaper. Yeah. You Do know. you have a favorite? Like, is there anything? Do you have a bookmark or, you know, favorite places you've been? Or I, I mean, I j- just mentioning a few of those, yeah. you know. I mean, I mean, Fontainebleau is such a famous playground for bouldering, mm-hmm. you know. It's just it's just ridiculous. You know, they're just these, like, you know, 10 to 20 foot high lumps of rock. They're just endless. And these, 
these cartoon shapes of rock. You know, the American Southwest is uh, maybe a, maybe the rock's even cooler because uh, it's a little more varied even. So we're around Chattanooga, Tennessee. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 I use these analogies a lot. I'm, it's got to be the same way that snowboarders and skiers talk about the best powder out in Snowbird, mm-hmm. you know, or in the Rockies. You know, people talk about Utah as a, a dreamy powder. You know, the, the super dreamy uh, tube wave, you know, that, mm-hmm. that break that just runs for mm-hmm. three miles down the beach, whatever. I, it, th- these rocks are that for us. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's the same. It's got to be the same thing. Yeah. Again, flow, state, yeah. you know. Just being in touch with it. You, like, yeah. Blending your, or finding your soul into that space or whatever. Well, it, you know, it's interesting. I think, I think a lot about consumerism versus productive flow. Like, so being mm-hmm. an artist, writing, mm-hmm. whatever, producing something mm-hmm. that's productive. Um, boy, I can sit down and I could, uh, watch netflix and uh, <laughs> you know binge watch like anybody like a champ so it's very consumerist um it's interesting so walking among these pieces of nature it is sort of consuming i don't it, i'm mm. not i'm not producing anything. i'm not if anything right, right, we're right. trying to like produce no leave no trace leave no footprint right 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 so that's i'm just thinking about it that's interesting so it is kind of consumerist but um i don't know i i guess i i guess i go back to that american desert because canyon lands mm. Maybe more than any other place. It's just walking through Canyonlands, uh, just the Dr. Seuss Dude, cartoon. I remember. It's just, it's just it's so off the hook. Yeah. yeah. The first time I went out there, uh, we went on a on a big slot canyon hiking trip. Yeah. And perfect. Uh, the 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 kids put the trip together. We're so into the desert. And I'm just like, I don't fucking desert. Why am I gonna go to the desert? Right. Like, <laughs> right. It's called it's the desert. Dirt. Right. There's nothing yeah, out yeah. there. Oh wow. Man. You went in there kind of thinking went, that in the back no, of your head. I mean, I went in there looking like uh, yeah, yeah, open like on the front end of a Fast and Furious movie. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a garbage. You know, whatever. And yeah. yeah. I came out of there just like mind blown. It yeah. was magical. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely magical. magical. Doctor in Seuss. every way. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had no idea that a, that a place so was going good. to affect me so right specifically yeah you yeah know, in that time and, and well I, oh and the stars you know the stars oh. come out and you're like what is going yeah, on for sure i we got up late at night and and walked across i probably had to take a piss or something like that yeah, walk yeah. out of the tent one night you could see by starlight i mean it was yeah it was bananas yeah you, yeah yeah there's this big cloud across the middle of the sky like what what is that oh, oh that's the milky way that's galaxy you yeah. gotta be kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the rest of this galaxy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so good. I just love the desert, man. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I think, too, the first time we went down in one of those slot canyons, it was almost like you could feel the the power of all of those flash floods that come ripping through there and just yeah, move around you. Yeah. It was like the rocks are moving almost. You know what I mean? You can, yeah. Be, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah that, I guess that's one, that's one of the kind of bonuses of being into the geology is it is a time stamp. It's mm-hmm. it's. I mean, you're just looking through time. Yeah, you're just you're looking at a at a verb. You're looking at erosion. You're, yeah, right. You just this is a process. Yeah, you're just looking at a process. And especially, I mean, I got one. I think one of the on that same vein, one of the most mind blowing things is when you look out across what at Monument Valley, right? The classic oh, yeah. American shot of Monument yeah. Valley. So it's just as far as the eye can see these towers. Well, obviously, that's all that's left. Right. So you're just staring through everything that's been washed yeah. away by water. That's a great There's feeling. There's a million and a half square mile hole yeah, that yes. I'm standing yeah, yeah, yeah. in, and that's the only thing that's left. And there's over just these little, these little peaks of evidence, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I've, I've, always, I've always known that, I mean, if, if there's any, if there's a bouldering area outside a, a little a town, a, mm-hmm. you know, a little American town, it's called Lover's Leap, and you go there to right. s- to smoke your first joint and throw a beer bottle and make out. I mean, you go there to walk around the rocks. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, uh, there's no such thing as a uh, a little bouldering area that's been ignored by sure. by non climbers. Yeah, they've all non climbers go there and walk around. Right. Yeah. So there is something universally appreciated. Yeah. I I don't know what that is, but. Is there anywhere that you haven't been yet that's on your list? <laughs> I mean, give me, I, give me a, a reasonable after list. you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would <laughs> starting with you told me the story. What did I, what did I see just a few months back? You were yeah. in Boulder, and I came back from that lunch and told Jackie the story about you guys riding the 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 dirt bikes, the, the big dirt oh, bikes yeah. out across valley after valley after uh, across 
uh, I'm, am I going to get this right? It was, it's not Afghan. It's one of the stands. Tajikistan. Thank you. Yeah. I knew it wasn't Paki or yeah, yeah, Afghan. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so across one of the stands and, the, and days into it, finding this giant fort Dude. up on a hill that no one's ever mentioned. You couldn't even find. Re- you found one reference to it yeah. in the paper. Right. Online. Yeah. And then you rode another two weeks. I, yeah. 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 It yeah. was. It's. Yeah. Those mountains are stupid. I mean, you know, you you just. You just one guy taking one trip, telling one story, mm. and I'm like, God, the world is a big, interesting it's place. It's crazy, man. <laughs> you know? You know, and I think, so, about, I think about China that way. Like, China has yeah. such an incredible uh, landscape across yeah. the, the width of that country. It's obviously, it's massively huge. And some of the, some of the places you see really don't, it's hard to imagine that those places are on Earth. Yeah, you know, right. like sure, it's sure. It's just insane. Yeah, the scale. I mean, I, I think your valley floors when you were going across across Tajikistan, were, uh, weren't weren't you at ten thousand feet on the valley floors? You were yeah. going through some big peaks. Yeah, it was, it was huge. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty high up, and the valleys would be about four four to six kilometers from the peak of the mountain yeah. above. You know, and it was. <laughs> Yeah, you're, and you can see the whole way. You can see the top of the mountain. Right, you're, right. You're, There's you know, nothing in your way. No, you're, it was really, it was crazy. Yeah, I, 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 I remember you said you didn't quite get the sense of the scale until you realized there was a house <laughs> way high, and it was well in the foreground. Oh, so you're like, yeah. oh, that is huge it's behind huge. there. Yeah, the yeah, scale yeah. Is, is really, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I, I think of, uh, I mean, I think of what the... Um, Eastern Eastern Russia, like Ru- oh, not so yeah. well, Soviet Union slash Russia. Um, boy, the endless forest—that's oh. interesting. And you know, there's some boulders. You know, there's some granite <laughs> boulder areas in those trees. That, Everybody knows that. that nobody um, has ever touched. Yeah. No. No way. I mean, uh, Africa, of course. I mean, yeah. people are just starting to finally get bouldering into the interior yeah. of Africa. Just going up a couple of countries. I think Jimmy Webb, what he went up to. Was it Zimbabwe or Zambia? I want to say he went up a couple of countries up from South Africa, kind of finally, and started to poke around some more rock, mm-hmm. and that's just barely started to happen. Yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, Jackie and I work too much. We every time we travel, we're like, oh my god, why don't we travel more? We're those people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Could you get a job? <laughs> yeah, we, I, there's just only a few of us at this company, and we're just yeah. so. Ab- I'm so obsessed with design and, and what I want to do next. So yeah. we don't travel enough, but yeah, good Lord. Of course, yeah. it's a giant world. Yeah. So tell just a little bit about you, what you're doing. Yeah. What you can share with us. Yeah, yeah, sure. Some of it's um, top secret. Yeah, no, we're, we're not too secret. We're, we're pretty open. If, if anything, I'm open and people, I, I get frustrated because people don't listen to me. I'm like, hey, this, this, this other kind of climbing hold is next. And people are like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, well, I was right about the last 10. 10. Yeah. So uh, I'm probably right about this one. Chances are good. Yeah, they? yeah. I think I got something here. Um, <laughs> I get I get mad at everybody <laughs> not listening. Um, so we've uh, there the last couple of years. There's a type of climbing, little climbing wall where you use an app and LED lights to light holds up. Mm-hmm. The first one that really did this well is is called a moon board. Uh, so Ben Moon, the kind of famous Engl- mm-hmm. English mm-hmm. climber. Those guys had a training facility and they had a little climbing wall and they, I don't know, a few years ago, they realized, oh, we could put a little LED through the bottom of the board and, and start, instead of using the colors of the climbing holds, start lighting it up. Like, hey, grab this one because this one's lit and then yeah. we'll, we'll write those 10 holds down or 15 holds down. That's a boulder problem. Yeah. And then we'll light up the other 15 and that's a boulder problem. So it took off. It's called a moon board. It took off. Jackie and I saw one. We saw a kid swiping his phone. We were in Sheffield. And we were just standing up. We'd heard about him and seen pictures. But we sort of watched the kid swipe his phone mm-hmm. and watch the boulder problems, watch him just shop through these boulder problems. And we're like, oh, that is very cool. That is super cool. I yeah. like this. So I, we actually met with Ben because I know him a tiny, tiny bit. I mean, I mean I, I, he wouldn't know. He wouldn't remember me from the 90s. But, I, you know, I, he was in the same World Cups that I was losing. He was winning. Um <laughs> So anyway, he was remember a, that he, kid. That was yeah, kid? yeah. I bet. I bet. There's no way he remembered me. <laughs> but um, uh, so he was in town. I'm like, hey man, uh, this is great. I kind of want to make holds for you, and and he, he he was like, yeah. He just wasn't that excited about it, you know. I mean, he he was open to it, but just not that excited about it. So, um, we're like, well, okay, uh, that's just not going to go anywhere. And then and we didn't. The last thing we would ever do is meet with somebody like that and then go do that, that thing that yeah. is not our personality right. so we just we just didn't think about it for a year mm. at all uh I, we just went back to bacon holds 
And then an old friend of Jackie's um, named Peter Michaud, boulderer and a, a, a computer coder, app developer. I'm so ignorant about that tech world that I'm not even exactly sure what to call him. But he called Jackie like a year or so later. He's like, hey, I love moonboarding and I made my own app and I think you guys should make holds. Um, so we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, well, all right. Uh, it's been a year, you know, we, we didn't think we we're going to do it, but I'll try a couple. And then we fell in love with it. We made a couple and we made our kind of the base of our holds light up. And we just sort of felt like we made changes that we really liked, mm -hmm. right? So usually we're pretty innovative. Usually we kind of come up with stuff. This, this time we were second for sure. Mm -hmm. And moonboarding is, is the classic. Um, so I don't know. I, I mean, I kind of think about it like bicycles, like there ain't just one bicycle. So we just came along and like Ben invented the, the, the downhill mountain bike frame, like, like mm -hmm. the, the rock shocks guys. And I yep. guess we're Cannondale. I don't know. Um, sure. so, um, yep. So now we've been really obsessed with it for about two years making. Now we've made, I think we're up to about 1200 different holds that light up on the system. Wow. And I'm, I haven't quite got it right on a couple of different versions. So we're making another 500. I don't know, man. I, we'll have 2000 different holds that light up in, wow. in a year. I'm sure before I'm done with this. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they'll ever be done with it now because now we realize, oh, well, let's make a 12 by 12 board and, and let's make ours, ours move so you change the angle. And now lately it's like, well, now I want one that's 16 feet wide and 14 feet tall. And, and uh, you know, you and I were just talking, let's, let's have them hinge in the middle. Let's start to do that next. Yeah. Um, let's, make, let's make one that's targeted just for really, really steep climbing. And then we'll make another one that's just for – low angle climbing so it goes from vertical to like 30 degrees overhanging mm -hmm. and all the holds will be targeted for that yeah. and then we'll make one that goes from 30 to 80 degrees overhanging because the holds are a little different right, right, right in right. general um so just that so now i'm up to like i need eight different versions so our next project we're looking at a space in boulder finally to um to, to put up a gym to build a oh, small gym that um has a bunch of these boards that light up I don't know that the world is ready for an entire gym that lights up yet mm -hmm. because it's still really fun to have a kind of a spread of wall where you have the red, yellow, blue, black holes and you mm -hmm. kind of spread out. That is still closer to that feeling of bouldering right? where you have the classic line and you're not bumping into other holds. You don't have to skip over holds right, so right, much, right. you know, because yep. that's, you know, that's a game that you're playing. This light up stuff is a amazing for training mm -hmm. so if you're willing to play the game of training it's an incredible tool mm -hmm. so what i envision next is a gym that has you know a hundred feet it's got six boards along one wall and they all light up and there's you know our, like so our board now our kilter board now we've had out for about a year there's something like seventeen thousand boulder problems on it now the world added there's about 80 of them out in the world or 90, I don't know, we've sold about 130 of them, and okay. they're back-ordered, so there's about 80 in standing. And so with about 80 out in the world, because everybody who has an app can add, you, you just pick out, you can build your own boulder problem anytime. Okay. So everybody, as soon as you have an app, you can add to it. So and those and when you add that boulder problem, it, it just it's goes worldwide. live to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, th I don't, I don't know how long it takes. 30 seconds later, who knows wow. how long the internet takes? But as soon as someone in South Korea writes one, puts a name on it, it shows up on the app, and mm -hmm. we can climb it. Um, and so there were 3,300 boulder problems added last month in mm -hmm. December. So I don't, I'm, I'm hoping there's 4,000 added this month. So yeah. very soon, and that we launched with our medium board, our, our middle one. So we have an easier one, a harder one, maybe an even harder one, maybe an even easier one. I don't like, I, like I said, I have a bunch of different versions. So a year from now, there will be six boards and I don't know, a hundred thousand boulder problems mm. along the wall, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I'm convinced, you know, this is where I like, I have a little frustration. I'm convinced that is going to become mandatory in every climbing gym. It's mm -hmm. just too powerful of a tool. Yeah. And I can't get any climbing gyms to really listen to me right now. They're like, yeah, we'll buy one. I'm like, no, 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 but, but, you but need make room for five yeah, or at least three yeah. easy, medium and hard. No one's listening to me yet. So yet. we're, we just found a space in Boulder, so maybe I think we're just going to build our own. Like, uh, well, I'm fine. I'll just build it. And we'll test it out. You yeah, we'll you test it will out. We'll know. The proof will be in the application I, of it. Yeah. You know. I'm pretty – I mean, at the heart of all this design, I make stuff I want to climb on. Right. I mean, it really – you know, back to that – back to the kind of, kind of concept of flow and, and creativity. Mm -hmm. I – for me personally – 
I have to make stuff. I call it the 5149. I cannot cross that line. I can't make it 51% for anybody else or for money or anything else. 51% mm -hmm. of everyone or more of every design has to be just because I just want it. I just want to climb on it. Yeah. Or sculpture, I want to look at it. Right, if right, it's right. fine art. Right. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, as long as, I don't know, as long as I can pay the rent and I get to climb there. <laughs> nope. I'll keep doing it. Yeah, yeah, it I'm, pretty, working. I'm pretty <laughs> happy. Yeah, yeah. And I'm <laughs> pretty damn sure other people are going to like it. Yeah. People seem to like this stuff, so. Cool. It's, and, I think it, what's fascinating about it is that there seems to be a move in sort of this kind of uh, virtual doing things. You know, yes. virtual cycling, virtual yeah, paddling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Virtual, there's all this kind of stuff about yep. like that. What I think it's really cool that you could, you we could might have a virtual game of pig. Or we something. might be there. Yeah. yeah. We, I mean, there's a, there's kind of a touchstone among among a few of us that have had, been talking about this for a year or, or, or a, a, a word, you know, soul cycle for climbing. Like, yeah, can we make soul cycle for climbing? I mean, it's it's I, I have not been sure, but I mm -hmm. feel a lot more confident every week, every month that goes by over the last especially the last year or so I man I maybe like yeah. I maybe we're gonna we're gonna try to do that in the space yeah. and, and see if we can bring in classes like a CrossFit class um, let's bring in classes I, I think we can have one instructor with three or four walls you know in the Boulder space I want to put up about 12 different versions and we'll have three or four and at any one time I, probably three or four matching medium ones mm -hmm. and at any one time i think what we can do is we can start to run a class and you know with bouldering you tend to have to rest a little bit right right so i think we can have one instructor and three people per board on let's say four boards all right that's a class of 12 people that's not bad mm -hmm. and i think we can run through I, it's gonna i mean it's gonna take work we're gonna have to try different stuff yeah but i'm starting to see a soul cycle for climbing. I sure. think maybe we can do it, man. Well, I think what would be interesting is to see how people, as they begin to use it, yeah, because the whole thing is open source. Yeah, right, absolutely. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how people start to apply it in yeah. their own ways, you know. And that's the cool thing about it is it's kind of, it's just it's sandbox, right? It's just kind of yeah, it's a total playground. We yeah. our app is is there's a lot about it that's pretty cool and flashy. There's a lot that I, I always want more and more features. Right now, it's a little bit Wild West in that you just kind of go shopping through the names, and you can pick grades and stuff. So we need to get better at having a real curated section of mm -hmm. the app, mm -hmm. like professional athletes, um, professional trainers. I'm, I've, got a, I've always had a real interest in sports science. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't go to school for it. I'm just not mm -hmm. too good at school, but um, I'm very fascinated by it. Yeah. I respect anybody who's, who's interested in that. Um, uh, anybody with that education. So I think we're going to get exercise physiology people oh, cool. to start to write interesting, uh, uh, cu curate collections of Boulder problems. Right. You know, I mean, one day I see I see people, fitness people saying, hey, we're going to work on on this is this is going to really work on the mid back, mm. you know, and mm -hmm. lower back strength. Right. Oh, and yeah, here's cool. a series of problems that do that. Um, well, that's cool because you talked about you talked about bumping up against the CrossFit thing. Yeah, and you could you could put that application in a space where somebody who's not necessarily a climber. Yeah, right. Somebody who's just in for a fitness class. Absolutely. But you could apply that as a part of the yep. routine. Yeah, I mean, you you, you, you and I have been climbing for so long, man, that we've been outside. I mean, climbing is one of those outsider sports. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. mean, I, especially, I mean, especially being a climber in the eighties, nineties, aughts, whatever. I mean, you you know, you you probably dated a climber. I mean, it's your whole scene. Right. I mean, again, we're we're like skiers and mountain bikers and surfers, and so. Um, we find we're, we're used to not really being able to bring it to the masses. They kind of had to come to us, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. it's our job just to keep them safe. Well, I, yeah, that, <laughs> you know, and, and there's always you, you're kind of proselytizing all the time. Yeah, like, hey, man, it's a, have it's you so tried fun. climbing? Yeah. yeah, you know, and I mean, and, and I mean, you got to know that it's just another very like surfing's every bit as cool. I mean, Brazilian right. Jiu Jitsu is every bit as cool as Boulder. It's yeah, a blast. Sure. Yeah, dirt biking. So there's all these cool things. But so we finally, yeah, yeah, we finally. I think we finally got some tools where we really can't bring it to people. Mm -hmm. And and from their side, from the culture side, with with Alex Honnold's mm -hmm. uh, movie, yeah, which was no small thing, I think. You no. know, I mean, you're, you're a media person. Mm -hmm. You know, media matters. Media has, I mean, it's it's talking to the to the culture, yeah. to the worldwide culture. Yeah. So with Alex's film and Jimmy's and Jimmy's film uh, with their film, uh, that was pretty meaningful. That was another click up in mm -hmm. people being aware of climbing, and then the Olympics. So, right. 
they're kind of reaching towards us and now we can reach back towards them. And I, yeah, man, I think absolutely. Um, CrossFit people will go, Oh, well, uh, all right, here's a tool that's actually climbing. And yeah. you know, we were talking earlier. I mean, I, I think the elevator pitch for this to those people is, Hey, this is a, this is by climbers for climbers. This is a real climbing. This is a real uh, tool in our sport. Like we, yeah. we use this constantly. Yeah. We made it, we use it. And you, and we did not dumb this down. No. We didn't dumb this down for CrossFit people or anybody. We didn't dumb it down for health club. It's, mm. it's real. It's yeah. our sport. We just happen to be able to bring it inside, which is an incredible advantage. Yeah. I think you and I talked about that years ago that, you know, early on, you kind of realize, oh, wow, will climbing be bigger than skiing one day? Because you can definitely build climbing gyms all up and down Florida. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot trickier to build um, surfing in, in Colorado right. Right. and skiing in Florida. But right. we can go anywhere. Anywhere. Absolutely. Not. So we don't really know how big climbing will get. Yeah, I, it's it's impossible to say, but it has a lot of potential. We're coming out of Colorado for so long, it seemed like maybe this is a s a center of the sport. Yes, you know, definitely not sure. the center, but yeah. it's, it's One a of center of yeah, the yeah. sport. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I was always kind of surprised when I'd go back. You know, I, I got into climbing in central Illinois. Yeah, um, great. It's good rock. Which great, is great rock. rock. Yeah, great but sandstone. I got, I got started in a. I love the place, man. Sure. But, you know, this dank little gym back in the 90s sure. in the south side of Chicago or the west side of Chicago. You know. What was it called? Indoor Summits. Yeah. If you great. guys are listening, dudes. Great. I don't even know you're still around, man, but I hope you are. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Out. That guy. Okay. I just told this story earlier today, but that guy, he had this, like, uh, tiny rock climbing gym with yeah. birthday parties and whatnot. It was, yeah. it was awesome. Uh, just a dusty, dirty ass old perfect gym. Perfect 90s was, gym. Oh, it was great. Yeah. But he also did these outdoor trips. He'd take guys climbing up in Wisconsin or, or kayaking up in Wisconsin. Sure. And I just remember it like, <laughs> I couldn't count, at least in my recalling of the thing, how many times I almost died on that first kayaking trip. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, that, God, whitewater terrifies <laughs> me. <laughs> it was just one of those things, like, it was pretty loose. Then, yeah, you know what I mean? like, sure. Uh, um, but at the same time, though, it was obviously so new. The whole yeah. scene was new. The indoor climbing gym thing was so new yes. and so niche and so weird. So when I came here from there, yeah, you know, I was a gym rat. Back I had worked at the gym. I was, you know, climbing yeah. every day, and I was feeling I was not that strong. Sure. But you know, I was okay for being at that gym. I was yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought coming out to Colorado, I was ready. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, you know. this could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then I just got here, and, and, you know, I went back to school for years uh, after after I got here. I just, everybody everywhere was just whooping my ass. But it was it was funny to see how big of a difference I was. Sure. And then going out from here, and you sure. can see, you still kind of felt a little bit weird when you're, like, living in your car, driving around. Like, yeah. what are you guys doing here? You're dirty and trying to take a bath in the in a yeah. fast food, you know, bathroom yeah. kind of place. And Wait, you chose to live in your car and, and yeah, take a bath in the in the bathroom in the sink, so, in the sink <laughs> so that you can get to the top of a rock that you can walk around the backside of. Right, yeah, you could get yeah, there's a trail. You know that, right guys? Yeah, there's another way up. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's cool to go from there and I wasn't in it nearly as long as you were, but it's cool to see it growing from there to we will have it in the Olympics. Yeah, not even no. an exhibition sport. A full on, I believe it's full on. I don't yeah. think it's an exhibition this time. Yeah. I think it's the real deal. Yeah, and that's um, cool. Who do, who's who from here is going? Do you know anybody? Uh, Rabatu, go? uh, Brooke Rabatu, okay, is going. Yep. So Robin's daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, there is another Amer. What other American is going? Oh man, I. I forgive me for not knowing the list of names. Yeah. I think there's one other woman. At, I, is there four slots of so two men and two women? I think so. You know, young men, young women. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, so I think it's one of the kids from Salt Lake. You know, Salt Lake and Boulder are still mm -hmm. tend to be, as you said, not the centers, but but hot point centers yeah. for both the industry and for athletes. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I think I think we'll have four people. Cool. Represent. Yeah. We're actually um, uh, one of the one of our guys is um, he's doing a documentary on the Cambodian team. They're trying to send a couple of kids. Oh, for cli the climbing! Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's great! It's so rad to see these. Well, there's, isn't there wicked limestone? Yeah. There's got to be great limestone there, it's right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really amazing. Th that's we were talking about parts of the world. There's still so many parts of the world where you hear rumors mm. about rock, 
Um, I remember talking to Todd Skinner about South Africa in 1991 or something mm-hmm. and in the dust. I think we're in Waco, you know, Waco tanks and just in the sand, Todd like drew a giant, you know, ring, a, a, a two foot around ring. And he said, we took a helicopter. We flew around Rocklands, this place called Rocklands at the time. He's the only one there. And he's like, we flew across it. It's this big. And then he put his finger in the, in the sand and said, this is Waco Tanks. This is this is the park we're in. You know, this is how big Rocklands is. So um, it's, you know, that's just one place that I, I've watched go from rumor to yeah destination. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I, the Cambodia will be the same thing. They'll, you know, these cliffs will get, I mean, you know, there is some, some people start to worry about how crowded cliffs are getting. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think the Cambodian cliffs are going to get that crowded. Yeah, it yeah, is hot it'll, as balls. It'll take there. a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like climbing in the. I mean, I, I, I was, I was like a t- such a grumpy climber. I was so mad that I couldn't <laughs> climb well, and I was just a terrible brat for like like twenty years, like two decades. <laughs> um, but I don't know. About sometime about ten years ago, I relaxed a little bit, and since then, I've climbed in like. But back around like Lake Belton, which is down like between Waco and Dallas mm. in August, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> with like, you know, 70s sweatbands on your wrist. So you don't so you don't turn your chalk bag <laughs> into, into mud. A bud, a bowl yeah, of yeah. Mud, yeah. And it was super fun. Yeah. It was just a nightmare conditions. I we climbed. <laughs> I climbed with a, uh, an old friend in um, Horse Pens, which is a great mm. bouldering park. Mm. We climbed in the rain, not a drizzle. The, the rain, rain. Yeah. in our tennis shoes, and we were trying to run up V ones and V twos, and they were epic. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, isn't it funny? Like sometimes the best, ex- like the joy, the greatest joy in all those, yeah, things are in the worst conditions. Well, just it's like get, you suffer a little bit for get it. Get back to who like you were at that kayak trip, and who yeah. I was before I knew you could climb over. Just get back to that like real pure. I just want to. Squ- I don't even know how. To do this, I know other people know how to climb. I don't, but I am going to try to squeeze my way to the top of this rock. Yeah. Just get right back to that, that yeah. real primitive core. It was brilliant. It's brilliant. You Super know, I, good. I was just talking to a buddy about this, that whole notion between, you know, when you when you first go into something and you have, there are no rules. Yeah. You're just like, right. fucking, that. I can do whatever. And I'm yeah, going to do yeah. a lot of stupid shit and stuff that won't work. But yeah, there yeah. are no rules. And how, how fun that time is. Yes. And then you... In anything, you progress through, you know, understanding and sure. kind of knowing and perfecting or, or building into it. And you kind of get to this point where it would be easy anyway to get to the point where, you know, you, you operate by the structure of the thing. You know what I mean? The, the rules that, yeah, that yeah, you know, yeah. dictate the shape of that. Structure. Yeah, you just take them more and more and more seriously. Yeah. And, and you've turned them into concrete, right? You right. can. Yeah. And you, <laughs> it's, it's like finding that place between the two yeah. where, where you can sort of live in this like yeah. wild west of, you know, yeah. the newness of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, the rigidious. Yeah. The beginner mind, you know, yeah. in the classic ways I said, but yeah, absolutely. But with the master's perfection, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You, well, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, well, so right. Probably similarly in that, you know, the, the older you are, the more you, you know, if, if there is a wisdom, a lot, half of it is in understanding how dumb you are. You know what I mean? The, the more you get into something, you realize, oh, I don't know anything about this. I mean, that's that's kind of what you should be thinking. You shouldn't mm-hmm. be thinking. You shouldn't be calling yourself a master, probably. I mean, feel free. But <laughs> I think that's probably a bad road to go down. So kind of in the same way, um, you shouldn't take it always so seriously. Yeah. You know, yeah. same same kind of idea. Yeah. So about serious, and then we'll yeah. probably wrap up here. Sure. Um, so s- in your world, it seems like things are changing. We talked a little bit earlier about like the shapes and sizes of things. Yeah. Are like uh, the, the yeah. shapes of the big volumes and stuff going on. Like yeah. The um, climbing gym design and wall design. Everybody's gotten better. Um, you know, basically CNC you, using CNC machines to cut the plywood panels, mm-hmm. um, and then having so many kids come out of design school being able to you know to to uh, write the CAD um, mm-hmm. um, designs for those. So uh, that's that's really helped climbing gym and wall design. So we can have kind of big, you know, interesting planes, you know, angle changes, but but they can be a little on the larger side and then use the same sort of CNC machines to cut plywood. We call them volumes, mm-hmm. which are just these big triangles. You know, sometimes they're only a foot across, but usually they're two or three feet across, and maybe they come out from the wall by a foot or 18 inches or something, and then they go up to five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 feet across. So these are these big geometric shapes. This is all made up of flat planes so mm-hmm. that we can, 
we can put climbing holds on the final plane. So you have a, you know, a 12 foot by 12 foot uh, flat space of wall or, or, you know, 20 by 12. And then you stick a, a five foot around sort of, you know, geometric uh, a triangle or some kind of trapezoid. Basically, mm -hmm. you put these trapezoids on the wall. And then you put uh, some large holds and then some small holds in between those large holds. And now you've sort of, con you've sort of filled in all the sizes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a, it's a, maybe it's a primitive principle of design, but something about that means we've, I, I mean, I don't know if, if I'm exactly trying to get all the way back to nature. I don't tend to think about climbing hold and wall design as getting us all the way back to nature, but. Mm -hmm balance looking for balance you're right your balance sure. is such a huge word and again in fine art mm -hmm. in all creative endeavors so the balance is getting right in that it used to be we had these big kind of flat walls and these little dots mm -hmm. and i still when i look at gyms now i'll still see kind of old gyms that you know uh i, I obviously have another reason to feel this way but i really feel like they should order some new holds <laughs> because they they've 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 got this big flat plane full of these dots yeah and now, it, you know, to me, it just crashes with my eyes now. I'm yeah. like, no, that's, we can do better than this. Yeah. That's not, and that's primitive. Yeah. So now, yes, the, the design world is, and uh, climbing wall manufacturers, climbing hold designers, we're all working together. Um, and yeah, cl climbing gym, gym from the wall down to the hold is, is pretty seamless. It's pretty great. Yeah. It's only getting better and better and better. It's cool to see so many really cool interesting shapes these big long you know, these big long like uh two foot shapes yeah yeah these big cool stuff pieces that now. fit together yeah, yeah th that's in 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 my little tiny corner of the design world that's currently what i'm obsessed with is holds that designs that work on their own mm -hmm. like they can be those dots that's fine but they i've actually kind of cut them and cut facets on them and planes that they work together really well they, like they're mm -hmm. actually designed to fit together without having to fit together. Sure, sure. So I'm trying to be really clever with these kind of puzzle pieces. So let's make, um, we, I, I've actually gotten a lot better at making holds that interact with each other. So, oh, so cool. you put one on and then you, you put another one up against it. Mm -hmm. And that second one kind of controls the size of the primary face of the first one. Oh, sure, sure. So that's, now that's a tool for route setters in the gym. Now they can create the size of the hold. If you just bolt the one hold on, that's it. I made it, we molded it, we cast it, it came out of the factory, and that's always how you grab it. Unless I happen to make a hundred other shapes that subtly bump up against the face of that. Right. Now you can pick any one of those and slide it around and then, and then lock it down. Right. And now the route setters themselves can change the holds. So I'm trying to help them have tools where they can, they can have even more creativity. Yeah. And that's kind of my obsession over the last couple of years. Yeah, that's very cool. Dude, what do you think about the Olympics wall. Would you venture a guess of what it's going to look like? I, what they've they've posted, um, I think Entrepri, mm -hmm. which is E N T R E P R I S or P R I S E S, which is one of the oldest companies in climbing wall design, if not the oldest current one, um, from France. So Entrepri, I believe, has a contract, and mm -hmm. I think if you go there, they'll they'll they've certainly I've seen pictures of the walls, and they're they're not super flashy. Again, they're They've got a few angle changes, mm -hmm. but on top of those angle changes, then the, the route setters, when they show up to set for those couple of weeks, they're going to bring all those big triangles and trapezoids, yep. and they're going to cover it with a bunch of colored trapezoids and then cover the holds. I, I think finally the last couple of years of World Cups, the last year or two, they're looking, they're looking really sculptural and fun. They're finally look. I'm, I'm proud of how they look finally. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be great. What do you think the movement's going to be like for the climbers? Well, so if you follow competition movement, it has, so made full circle conversation, mm -hmm. it's gone back to the Johnny Dawes. That's why the dynamic kickflip style movement mm -hmm. has come. That's why it's really blossomed, because here's what happened. The people setting the competitions realized if the movement is complex, like a kickflip, and you've got 100 athletes it's way more likely that um, a lot of them are going to just not get it quite right. right. In other words, they're going to fall. And if you have sort of kickflip into kickflip into kickflip, these, these real complicated movements, any athlete at any time can lose a little bit of focus and, and, and spin off the wall. Mm -hmm. 
before that, 20 years ago, competition tended to be the smallest holds, big distance. Well, here's what happened. Everybody got so strong. So basically, you know, uh, in the World Cup level, you know, the strongest 10 people from every country came. Well, the strongest 10 people in every country were pretty s strong in a pretty similar way. Yeah. We were all training in a similar way. So if, you, if the holds were positive and far apart, they could get to them. And, right. and it wasn't a complicated motion. Mm -hmm. So it was hard to, if you're strong enough, you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So in those competitions, well, they either made it too hard and nobody would get to the top or they made it doable and 19 people get to the top or even four or five get to the top and you have a, you have a tie. Right. So it's all about the separation. Mm -hmm. So the, the route setters for competition realized, oh, let's make this movement more complicated. And they sort of discovered what we were setting. You know, I used to set this stuff in competitions and the, and in America, but they'd only let me set like one problem because it was a freak show thing. Right, right, right. Right. So I was allowed to set like one problem in the corner and people would try to run across the wall <laughs> and they'd fly right. They were so spazzy. They were just climbers were just the geekiest, worst athletes when it came to dynamic movement. They just right. couldn't do it. Right. There was like 10 of us in the world that cared. Yeah. And, and it was just awful. It was the most embarrassing thing ever. Uh, and and then and then somehow, like I said, kind of during that period, I disappeared. Yeah, I kind of went into fine art and, and did my own thing. The world kind of figured out, oh, this this complicated stuff mean. is perfect for separating the field. <laughs> and now they're so obsessed with it that um, in, that it's actually become there's a pretty common criticism. Um, there's a lot of climbers that are saying, oh, it's too parkour. -y. It's too much parkour. Mm. It's too much running. Mm -hmm. um, and so. You know what I think is about to happen? Um, you know what the future is? <laughs> um, so, that, so another part of the future, I think we're going to split again. You know, climbing uh, was alpinism. And then it was kind of uh, big mountains and then maybe 100-foot cliffs on ropes and then bouldering and then there's ice. And mm -hmm. we keep splitting off, right, in right. these disciplines. Well, I'm pretty sure we're not that far away from that that split there's there is going to be a real focus on dynamic on kickflip mm -hmm. climbing mm -hmm. climbing and power climbing and i think i'd, I'd like to host one in the, in the next couple of years i'd like to host a competition where we just divide it so yeah. in the olympics there's a speed division a roped and a bouldering division right so what i'm proposing is i think there's going to be a movement division soon even among bouldering and i think you could hold a comp where you just it's all bouldering but it's power and then it's dynamic it's kick flipping and I, I, I bet I'll bet we see that in the next couple of years. I'm going to we'll try to do one, you know, but yeah. I'll bet that kind of comes up I think because be cool. we're getting a lot of people are getting a little frustrated by it saying, well, that's not real climbing. Although maybe, you know, I know you've got to wrap up, but interestingly, in walking through those slot canyons and walking through nature, mm -hmm. nobody, very few people used to see the dinos, used to see these dynamic, these f dinos, is, you know, it's a far apart hold. So the only way to connect the, the hold to hold is dynamic movement. You right. can't reach statically. You have to let go of the rock, cover five or six or seven feet and reattach to the rock. That's a dynamic movement, right? right? That's kind of what we're talking about. Well, nobody could see that stuff on rock. We just didn't have the eyes for it. Right. And up until a few years ago, everybody said that's not on rock. And what we realized is, oh, the hell it isn't. Of yeah. course, it's geology. Geology doesn't care. It's out there. Yeah, there's yeah. you know there's a pocket here and it's a blank rock and there's a pocket there. Yeah, it exists. So yeah. we've all we got the eyes for it in the gyms on plastic. We set it. We got the eyes for it, and now people are discovering it on rock. And so the plastic is influencing what we do outside, back yeah. and forth. That's that, cool. that's that's kind of the current state of the sport. Yeah. The future. Then uh, always and the future. future. Always the future. <laughs> okay, let's wrap. Yeah. Um, for anybody who wants to find you reach out to you where would they do it um i mean kilt i think we're kilter grips right on instagram okay uh i'm i'm not i i tend to not focus on that part of the company but i i it's kilter or kilter grips on instagram you could uh kilter board you know that whole mm -hmm. kilter boarding is now a whole thing like moon boarding um so we have a kilter board instagram uh we have a facebook page you know cool. sure you can reach out to me okay we'll find you Thank you, brother. Thanks so Thank much. You, it's always man. great to see you. It's great to see you, bro. Thank All you. Right. Thanks for some time. Of course. Thanks for freezing out here. I know freezing. it's gotten it's gotten cold. Freezing yeah. Colorado. Thanks, right, bro. Brother.